Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm going to be talking about another episode from Season 2. This one is our Halloween special, The Ghost Story. This episode was written by Nigel McKean and directed by our very own John Walton, Ralph Waite. This episode is a little darker and a little creepier. Uh, it all centers around basically a Ouija board. They call it a spirit board. And when the Waltons end up bringing home this spirit board, uh, they go down a very dark, interesting, and um, questionable path in terms of what, they're, what they believe in, how superstitious they are, whether or not it's possible to stay in contact with people who have passed on. So it raises all those questions. But uh, it is a apt Halloween special for us. Early in the episode, John Boy encounters Ike and the Baldwin sisters who are using this spirit board. The Baldwin sisters are trying to decide whether or not they are going to pay retail for mason jars from Ike or get them wholesale someplace else. And they literally are asking Ike to be another hand on on the uh, little disc thing, which uh, obviously is a conflict of interest for Ike because of course he'd wanted to say goodbye from me. Because Ike does not want to have the Baldwins coming in every day and asking him to spend all this time with the board. He insists that John Boy take it home. And the younger members of the Walton family, all the children become fascinated by this and want to ask all kinds of questions. Um, I remember when I was young, me and some of my girlfriends uh, had a Ouija board and we would we would ask it questions like whether some boy that we liked liked us or who were we going to marry and what was their name and actually similar questions get asked by uh, some of the girls early on but uh, we have a lot of fun with it until things take a darker turn. I could really feel Ralph's hand in this episode. He really liked to create realistic settings and, and have real life happening. So early on at this dinner table scene, he has created a circumstance where multiple conversations are going on. Oh, he doesn't want to talk about it. Oh. No, I do not like that. Oh, sure. Jason, Jason Coverdale. Jason, 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 Jason Bourne Jr. Jr. No. No, they weren't on the billion. Shut up, Barry. The bald people. The sisters. The question of ad libs has come up a lot, and clearly in this case, Ralph had us creating a lot of hubbub, and it's possible that we just did a lot of sort of wild lines, which basically they might have just uh, had us all gather around the microphone and had us do a whole bunch of different sorts of conversations and things that they could then later edit in. But it would not have been scripted for all of this overlapping dialogue to be happening. That would have been done in post-production. At the beginning of this dinner scene, uh, Ralph has chosen an interesting angle for the camera where it is outside the kitchen set on stage 26, and he is shooting through the window. So he did some really interesting camera choices within this episode, and this was one of them. The theme of all the different relationships and conversations going on continues after dinner when the younger children gather around the spirit board and are playing with that while grandma is reading Henny Penny to Elizabeth and our temporary house guest, little Luke, whose father is in Richmond trying to get a job and get set up before he has his son join him. And then John and Olivia are still having a conversation in the, in the kitchen. So again, the sense of lots of different things happening in a family, which is very much the case. Another shot that Ralph created that I loved was when all the children are in the barn using the spirit board, he chose to shoot from above and this reminded me of the shot in the homecoming when we were in the barn and we were cracking walnuts for mama's applesauce cake and the camera shot the circle of the children from above. So creating that once again. Then a little later on, you see also an overhead shot where the spirit board has been left on the, um, just kind of on the platform there in the barn. And as John Boy leaves, you see the shadow of him, and then it reveals a spirit board and just kind of eerie and creepy in keeping with Halloween. The use of editing and music really lent the uh, feel for this episode. In this case, it's another sort of dark, windy night. And as John Boy and Jason are 
talking to the spirit board, trying to get answers about what's going on. Uh, you hear their voices as the camera kind of comes down. And then from a distance, you see the two of them in the barn in this shadowy kind of a setting. What we come to find out is there's some question. It, it appears that someone is trying to leave a message for Luke, our young house guest. And John Boy's fascinated by this whole area of the spirit world. And is it possible for us to have that kind of interaction? So he gets a whole bunch of books from the library and he's researching and trying to see what he can learn about the subject. But in this case, he and Jason keep getting this answer that there is a message for Luke. Different things that are uh, unusual and hard to explain happen. Uh, Luke's picture of his mother that was on a dresser in the bedroom can't be found anywhere. And then when his father sends uh, a letter and a train ticket for him, they're packing for him and all of a sudden the train ticket can't be found. Meanwhile, John Boy and Jason have gotten this message of something about Luke must not and then something about a train. So they are very concerned that maybe if there is any truth to this, that maybe there's some question about whether or not Luke should be getting on that train, but they don't quite know what to say because they have no proof. So this creates kind of a dilemma for them. And Mama won't talk about what's going on. She's very concerned about something that happened early on with Luke's mother and after she passed away. So she kind of wants to steer away from the whole thing. So they don't want to upset her by raising their concerns. As they head to the train station, uh, they're in the truck. And when you see the um, John Boy and Jim Bob and Elizabeth and... Luke all in the back of the truck. Uh, this would be a, what we called process shot. So this was not shot actually on the back lot driving along. Then inexplicably, John thinks he sees something and he swerves to avoid whatever he thought he saw and ends up kind of up on the embankment and nobody's hurt, but the truck's stuck. Uh, so that there's a shot where you kind of see the kids in the back, you know, being jostled around as the truck comes to an abrupt stop. That would have been done very carefully and they probably would have gone, okay, and maybe even probably with a rope, like pulled the truck in and let everybody kind of react to that. Or in this case, probably overreact so that uh, you had more of a sense of their, their motion there. Ultimately, Luke does miss the train. Then later on when they're back home on the radio, Again, reminiscent of the homecoming around the radio when they hear news that there has been an accident. In this case, the train that Luke was supposed to be on derailed. Mama says, shut the radio off. But, you know, everyone has this moment of, wow, maybe there was some message. Maybe his mother was looking out for him and trying to send a message to keep him safe. And right around this time, we also find that the picture has reappeared now on the mantle of the fireplace. An adorable subplot with puppies. Who doesn't love puppies? Once again, here we are working with animals. Uh, for some reason, a dog um, has made its way into Ike's store and has had her puppies there in Ike's store. They are in a box crate, whatever, under the pool table. And there's these adorable puppies. And one of them even escapes at the end of the scene and, and Ike has to grab it and put it back in the box. Elizabeth, of course, is dying to have one of these puppies. And there's talk about, well, maybe she could have the runt because nobody wants that. And is she the runt in the family? And and um, Luke talks about how his father said, if they get a place with a yard, then maybe he can get a dog. And they go through a whole thing of, what are they gonna name the dog? Going through the alphabet and we all, uh, you know, throw out different names, Elizabeth and, and uh, Jim Bob and Luke throw around names for the puppy up. But ultimately they call it, I think, Flibber. Don't know why, but there you go. And Elizabeth does send the puppy with Luke to be with him in his new home. I love the final narration for this one. Earl Hamner basically uh, reflects on that there are forces in life that we understand and those that we don't, that are mysterious to us, that we can't explain, but that there is that love has its own power and who's to say that the power of that love can't transcend time and life. So I leave it to you for how you feel about that particular subject. 
but as a Halloween episode goes, I thought it was appropriate. So I hope you enjoy your Halloween. That's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons, our Halloween special. I'll be back with more Behind the Scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.